a few years ago I was at uh, CCW in Las Vegas because I had a panel there, right? And something that James Dodkins said stuck with me, and I repeat it often to this day. And that is, I'm not poor, but I am cheap, right? So, I just have a question before we start the episode. Um, does anybody else use OBS and uh, OpenShot for all of their uh, content? Or is that just me? Um, am I missing something by not paying for software for this stuff? Or... Yeah, I, this is just a question before we start the episode. I don't mean to take up too, mon- too much of your time, but uh, here we go. Enjoy. Roll that beautiful bean footage. Welcome back to another episode of Caffeinated CX, where we talk about customer experience and stuff, all in a hyper-caffeinated state. I'm David, the Caffeinated CXO, the Chaos Coordinator, and all-around OK Guy. Welcome to the show. Today, we have a special episode for you. Who's we? We is me. We is I. The universal we. There we go. So, if you could spare a moment to like, subscribe, rate, review, and share this show Mm -hmm. so we can make this show grow, it would be very, very very appreciated. Yeah. Today, we're going to talk about key performance indicators. That's right, KPIs. And we're going to talk about my favorite KPIs when it comes to running a blue collar call center. What's a blue-collar call center? Well, it's a trades call center. You know, the call centers for, well, plumbing, HVAC, electricians, and so on and so forth. At least ones that haven't been bought out by private equity yet. So, here we go. What's my number one favorite KPI. I'm going to save that for last. That would be ridiculous if I gave my favorite one out first. What are you, what am I, crazy? Let's talk about my least favorite. And I know, I know, it's important. It's, it's important because you, you, you need to track it. It's the average handle time. The time it takes to handle a call. Now, there is a Goldilocks zone for the average handle time. For the average... And and, and, and let's just narrow it down to average talk time. Okay? So we'll take out any hold or anything like that, because why would you put a customer on hold? You shouldn't do that anyway. But, let's say average talk time. There's a Goldilocks zone. There's a sweet spot for it. Right? If your calls are too short, that's a red flag. If your calls are too long, something happened that caused it to go off the rail. You need to work on call control. There's a Goldilocks zone. And I found that Goldilocks zone is anywhere between three to four and a half minutes for this kind of call center. Right? Anything shorter than that, some corners were cut just a little bit, some corners. If it's longer than that, well, what happened? What happened on that call? So it is an important stat. It is an important KPI, and I will never deny that. But 
you get too strict on average talk time, average handle time, you're going to have people rushing people off the floor, or off the phone, rather, and uh, that ain't good. That'll affect the customer experience, won't it? So, you don't want to be too draconian. Some calls are going to be longer than others, but as long as the majority of the calls are within that Goldilocks zone, everything's going to be all right. That's right. So, the next KPI that I'm going to talk about is email capture rate. Now, let's not make any bones about it. Email is almost just as important, if not just as important, as a phone number these days, right? Why? Remarketing. That's why. Sending out little coupons. Building up your email database for those lovely email blasts that everybody loves. You want an email capture rate of 90% or above. I think that's fair. Everyone has an email address, especially the people that say they don't. You know they do. Why are they lying about it? That's weird. If they got a smartphone, if they have internet at their house, they have an email address. It is 2024. I didn't buy that excuse in 2005. That's crazy. Why are they lying about that? So, you got to find ways to get that email capture rate up 90% or better. Anything less than that, they're probably skipping the question about the email, right? They're probably glossing over it. Or, if you're very unlucky, you have some agents that are uh, like, um, Hey, if, if, if you wouldn't mind, uh, can I have your um, email address? It's okay if you don't give it to me. I won't be mad. Stuff like that, right? And you don't want that. Oh, what what a excellent, excellent display of confidence when it comes to that, right? So, yeah, you know. Email. Capture rate. 90%. Boom. So, so far we have AHT, average handle time, and we have email capture rate. What's next? Well, the next one is your service level, your lovely SLA. Now, this measures the percentage of calls that were answered within a certain amount of time. So, X percentage, Y speed of answer, right? So, most that like the gold standard right and no, nobody knows why the gold standard is there other than the fact that it sounds good is 80 20 right 80 percent of the calls answered in 20 seconds or less no one knows why it's that way well maybe because of the 80 20 rule right and they were like eh, that sounds good that's a good number right well that 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 works and it's something definitely to strive for right if you're not there yet but it all it all depends on your business, right? There are some where 80-30 works or 80-60, right? 80% 80 of your calls answered within 60 seconds. That works for some industries. Don't work for ours, but it works for some, right? I would love to see 90% of calls answered within 10 or 15 seconds. I think that's a good one. I think that's a good SLA. I think that's a great service level. Are we there yet? Sometimes. Are we there there? Are we there yet today? Nope. Were we there last week? For a few hours. Is what it is. So I, I think that's one of the most important KPIs you can look at. Right? Is how how many of your customers are being answered within the first or second ring, right? And you want to be fast, especially when you're in a uh, trades call center where they ain't just calling you. 
they ain't just calling you right the next one I want to cover is sentiment scores right and uh, if you are lucky enough to have the ability to measure sentiment scores then you should measure them and then you should incentivize off of them because the better the sentiment the more likely they are to become a customer right and that's good you want that you want high sentiment so going right into the next one right is call quality score QA score right now we go off of a matrix right that's how they score and that matrix took uh, honestly like 30 minutes to make but that's uh, regardless um, but it's a very robust matrix and it's fine-tuning and everything right but 85% or better on QA scores I think is good um, I'd love to have it 90% or better but 85% is good it's it's a better than good call it's like between good and great right so great would be 92% or better right 85% is better than good less good than great the thing is you should never let perfect be the enemy of great so there we go right um, and you can use the sentiment scoring with the QA forms or you can go for AI QA but I don't trust that yet and why don't I trust it because it seems like it's just checking off boxes right because you can't run audio through chat GPT yet maybe I'm wrong it's really hard to determine tone through a transcript right and the majority of the Q AI QA that I've seen is based off of transcripts cool that's cool buddy not not exactly the best right but it is what it is I prefer maybe a AI looking at the transcripts and then a human being who is trained to uh, listen for the tone and the sentimentality and all that stuff because uh, you can trick AIs pretty easily especially when it's like you know a transcript you can say everything right but what if you sound sarcastic I don't know I don't know uh, the next one and honestly one of the most important ones if not the most important is the booking rate the inbound or outbound depending on your call center booking rate how many lead calls did you take and how many of those leads did you convert into a scheduled appointment now this one can vary this one can vary by your service by your divisions by your trades if you have multiple right but I think an 85% booking rate is okay right that's still 15% of the leads going down the toilet and those are expensive but 85% you're in a good place you're in a good solid foundation to improve what I like to see is more 90 to 92 95 if we're really pushing it um just beware of the people who are at 100 percent booking rates for days on ends weeks on end months on end because they're lying they're gaming the system so if you have the ability and the budget and the personnel have someone probably your qa who's ever doing that audit the calls listen to the calls not only when they're grading but also so that you have an accurate booking rate because without that you're flying blind and you might be rewarding and incentivizing and praising the wrong people right and that's not good because other people can see that because other people listen to the calls too especially if they're all on the same like call floor right you didn't book that call or 
that, you, that call, no, that was not a general inquiry call. That was not a wrong number. That was not a marketing call. That was someone who needed service, and you marked it as a wrong number. What is wrong with you? Oh, they don't listen to the calls anyway. Yeah, don't be that center, okay? Now, some honorable mentions before I let you go. Occupancy rate, right? Now, the occupancy rate tells how, mon how much time of an hour the employee is spending time working with a customer, right? And on this one, you want to be, there's a Goldilocks zone on this one too, there's about 75% to 80% of the hour they should be dealing and helping and working with a customer, right? The other time, the other 25 to 20% is going to be spent, uh, you know, taking a breath, taking a drink, going to the bathroom, catching their breath. I already said that, but you know, so they don't burn out. There is nothing worse for someone on the call floor than back to 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 back calls. And it is what it is, right? Sometimes that can't be avoided. Either you had a lot of call outs and your schedule didn't take into account shrinkage, which is also a big mistake. We'll do uh we'll do another episode about uh Workforce management and scheduling, because I got it down to a science, at least with the size of the contact center that we have here. <coughs> but it's also not hard. You don't need like million dollar software to make a schedule, guys. I'm sorry. But, uh, you know, it is what it is. And if you want it and you can afford it, go for it. Right? It Budget is relative. It is what it is. So, now, other KPIs that I like is NPS, Net Promoter Score. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Uh, first Contact Resolution, FCR. That's a good one. Hard to do when you're in a trades call center because um, you are booking the call for someone else to go out there. I guess if that's the uh, resolution, then I guess if you want to define it that way, right? Um, let's see. Abandonment rate. This is one that you need to pay attention to. All right. So now abandonment rate is the percentage of customers who hang up before their call is answered, right? And there's, uh, there's two kinds of abandoned calls, right? There's the ones that literally are a customer that's, you know, hanging up because you didn't answer quick enough. Then there's the ones that figured out in a split second that, you know, they called a wrong number. They're trying to call their friend Bob. And then they get a message saying, your call may be recorded. Like, hey, that's not Bob, right? So, is what it is. You can set a threshold that anything over this many seconds can, is considered abandoned if they if they hang up, right? Um, I would recommend that. Um, it's kind of one of those ego stats, though, right? So, and then there's, you know, the ones that just bounce off because they're robocall or uh, telemarketer, wrong numbers, again, stuff like that, right? So, you want to pay attention to your abandonment rate. Um... Let's see. Let's do a little quick Google search while I have you here. Uh, let's see. What is the average abandoned rate for call centers? Between 5% and 8%, right? Um, according to this, um, uh, 2% and 5% is another one. Um high call abandonment rate is 10% or more. I think you'd probably want to be in that 2 to two to 5%. Uh, I think 10% is pushing it. 8% is pushing it. Right? And then if a uh, call does get abandoned, right, and they're on the phone for like maybe 20 seconds or so, 
if you have the bandwidth, have someone give them a call back, right? It might have been a customer and they might have, I don't know, been disconnected or something. It, it happens, right? Uh, but you should monitor that daily. And uh, yeah, so uh, another honorable mention is speed of answer. Kind of ties into SLA or service level. But in the trades, you want to answer the phone as quickly as possible. You want to answer it within the first ring because uh, people don't have much patience when their house is being flooded with sewage, right? They're going to call. Oh, they're not answering. I'll call the next person. Nah. You want to answer them quick. You want to answer them very quick. And as you can tell, I'm talking more about inbound KPIs than anything else for this episode. Uh, there's also outbound KPIs, uh, digital KPIs that we could go into discuss, but we're already at like 20 minutes here. And uh, they're more or less kind of the same. I mean, right? So, but AHT, average handle time, probably the least important, right? Just stick within that Goldilocks zone that I mentioned. You should do fine, right? And if not, adjust your call guidelines or, God forbid, your script, right? Until you're in that Goldilocks and make sure that you role play and train your employees a lot. Okay? A lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. Right? And then the next one was like, I forgot what they, I forgot what order they were in. I don't have a script or anything. So if you're curious about a recap, just rewind, I guess. I don't know. But those are the KPIs that I find the most important, plus some freebies that you should keep an eye on, right? Are there more? Yes. Are some of them just vanity metrics? Yes. Are the ones that I mentioned important? Yes. Those are the ones, at least if you're in a blue collar call center, like I am, those are the ones that you want to pay attention to. All right, speed of answer, your service level, your booking rate, your call quality scores, your sentiment scores, your average handle time, and you'll be good, right? Also, while paying attention to the abandonment rate, and all that jazz, right? So, there you go. I hope you enjoyed the episode. If you didn't, maybe next week will be better for you. I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. But, there we go. And you know what? I love you. Hey. How you doing? You still here? Did you share the show yet so we can make the show grow? Did you like? Did you subscribe? Did you do any of that stuff? Or are you still here? Go. Go do that. See you on LinkedIn. <laughs>